The Supreme Court has just ruled unanimously that Colorado courts cannot keep you know who off the state's ballot for engaging in insurrection. I'm a, I, I'm, I'm a really, was a really big fan of the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court went too far here. It didn't, it didn't surprise me. I'd started to gain f faith, as Sonny would tell us, like, this is going to get him. And I was like, ah, ah, ah. I thought that the 14th Amendment and our framers knew better. On this channel, we've been saying for years that the actual threat to democracy comes from the left and the Democrats, who have captured almost every institution with the exception of the Supreme Court. And that's exactly why they're so angry they can't just take over, remove their opponent from the ballot, and rig the election in their favor. Which is, historically, a very democracy thing to do. That's a joke, isn't it, Dad? The Supreme Court has just ruled unanimously that Colorado courts cannot keep you-know-who off the state's ballot for engaging in insurrection. But finding that a state cannot make a call that could have a national impact on a federal election. Of course, unless it's about a woman's right to choose, but let's not get into that. Hmm? Maybe somebody could help me out here in the comments, but what does one have to do with the other? What do you all think of this? I mean, is anybody surprised by this decision? No, no. and no. I actually think it was the right decision to mm -hmm. make because it would have, you know, if Colorado had been allowed to do that, we'd have this chaotic sort of process where you have 50 states and some are choosing to put him on the ballot and some are choosing not to put him on the ballot. Check out the big brain on bread. Is anybody surprised by this decision? No, no and no. I actually think it was the right decision. <clears throat> it probably won't surprise when I tell you that she's lying out of her ass. Back in January, when Democrats first launched this attack on our elections, Sonny Hostin described it as black letter constitutional law. I did mean him. Yep. <laughs> Speak you know, to it. Speak it. Speak to him. I'm a speak to it, girl. It. Speak it. You know, the thing is, um, this is black letter constitutional law, and the section three of the 14th amendment basically says if you participated in an insurrection against this country you may not hold office is anybody surprised by this decision no, no. and no. i actually think it was the right decision <laughs> man just because the establishment has been repeating a lie over and over for years now doesn't make it true trump has never been charged with insurrection so there's no legal basis for the claim the fact is he didn't incite an insurrection and the democrats know that if they were to charge him with that then it might blow back on them oh that was different because the fact is democrats have used a lot of fiery language themselves in the past. He also told people to march peacefully, which the media actively works to cover up. We know for a fact that the vast majority of people who went to the Capitol that day got his message to march peacefully because out of 120,000 people that showed up, only around 300 actually took part in rioting or destruction of property. The other thousand or so were charged with misdemeanors for being on the Capitol grounds or in the Capitol. So we're talking about a mostly peaceful protest here, but as as we all well know by now, their standards for themselves do not apply to their opponents. And let's just be honest here, if the media ever talked about that 120,000 peaceful people, they wouldn't be able to repeat this insurrection lie for so long. Amy Coney Barrett, though, jumped on that opinion about mm -hmm. the overstep of um, the punishment, that it shouldn't be left then to Congress. Yeah, she had a concurring judgment. Yeah, a concurring well. judgment, which I thought was important because we do talk so much about the partisanship of a group of people mm -hmm. that should not be partisan. Mm -hmm. So that was reassuring to me, and of course it was for women that were talking about that yeah. part. Excuse me. What? It didn't, it didn't surprise me. I'd started to gain f faith, as Sonny would tell us, like, this is going to get him, and I was like, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. But seeing it, I now get the chaos which would ensue. That is a shocking revelation that we're just finding out about right now. Listen, um, I think it was the right decision, not a welcome one. It sometimes mm -hmm. can be the right thing precedentially, but also maybe you worry about it for the country. But the justices were always going to look at what could this mean 10, 20 years down the mm -hmm. road. And to Anna's point, there was also a Missouri Secretary of State, a Republican uh, Secretary of State, who threatened to keep Biden off the ballot under the same decision. So it does open a bit of a slippery slope. I'm shocked. This is shocking just to be fair, both Sarah Hines and Ferreira both said they thought it was a bad idea that would get struck down in the Supreme Court, but still saying that they believe Trump engaged in an insurrection. So they did agree with taking him off the ballot, but just that it would backfire when Trump weaponizes the same tactic. You see, it's not weaponized when Democrats do it, it's just different. Even though Sarah Hines admitted back in January that she believed this entire thing was a flawed premise, she admits right there that she still believed it would get him. This is why I say these people are dangerous. 
they will never see their actions for what they are because they're convinced it's justified. And it will always be justified by virtue of it coming from them. You know, I'm a, I, I, I'm a really, was a really big fan of the Supreme Court because yeah. I always felt that they were, whether I liked their decisions or not, that they, they, with the exception of, of, um, I, uh, um, Clarence Thomas? No, no, um, uh, um, what am I doing here? Oh my goodness, it, that, that, it doesn't Capital. even matter. But it, 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 it doesn't matter because for a second we all said, well, why are they voting making it okay for Bush to become president? Mm -hmm. You well, know, we, Bush we, we got very, very that. annoyed with that. That's the first time that the Supreme well, Court really up dabbled in politics. Well, now she's pointing to Democrat election denial. The election denial that kicked off the whole trend and blaming the Supreme Court for installing Bush when Bush won every single recount there was. But election denying conspiracy theories are just different when they do it by virtue of it being done by them. The fact that all nine of these Supreme Court judges agreed that Trump should be on the ballot should be a eureka moment for these people, but it won't. All right, folks, that's all I have for that one. Thanks for watching. Make sure to keep checking back for more. And if you're still watching, might as well hit that like button on your way out. Thanks a lot. See you on the next one.